Hey, Chuck. Hey, hey. What's we're happening, back. Neil? I'm back in your face. That's right. <laughs> Which means that we're gonna we're gonna find out about something. Um, hopefully, that is delightfully obscure. Obscure, but yes. But the hope part is it will be obscure. The hope is that it's nonetheless interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yeah. Well, so, far, so far. So far, so good. It's, it's going good. All right. So I want to yeah. talk about Earth's magnetic field. All right. Already you got me. If I that, may. Yeah. This is good stuff already. Okay. So, um, it's we all know it has a magnetic field, and you, you learn that as a child when you have a compass, right? Particularly if you were like you know in one of the scouts programs, you have a compass, and the needle points north, and so that's north. Okay, so, um, so the north side of the needle points north, and that's how you know it's north. So let me start out by saying, we all know that in magnetic fields, opposites attract, right? You knew this. Yes, well, you, you take the north and the north, you put them together, and it's very cool because they- They, they repel. Yeah, and, you, and then you have magnet races. This is <laughs> okay. how you have magnet races. You push them across the table. Yes, you push them across the table, okay. and that's how you have a magnet okay, race. Okay, so if you flip it around, then the north sticks to the and south. They, okay. Right. So what that means is, if the needle on your compass is magnetized north, then it's actually pointing to the Earth's south magnetic pole. Right. That makes sense. Because it that means would be the opposite. What you're calling the North Pole is, is actually not. the South Pole. Right. I just want to start there. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for ruining everything. <laughs> 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 and now I don't know what to believe. Okay. Period. Right. Earth's south magnetic pole is in the north. Because all north magnetic poles point to it. Right. Okay. Interesting. So, so I just didn't know if you knew that. I, you know that what? And don't I know shoot it, the messenger. I Ain't know it fault. now, and I, I, I got to tell you, I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. No, that may, wait, that's, that's actually very cool. But wait, there's more. Uh -oh. okay, so Earth's magnetic field um, is not aligned with Earth's rotation axis. Okay, so Santa Claus is up there on the North Pole, all right? And your compass doesn't actually point to him. Okay? Well, it, it does point to him if you're exactly on the longitude where the North Magnetic Pole is found. If you are anywhere else, you are not pointing to the top of Earth's rotation axis. You are pointing to someplace in Northwest Canada. Because our magnetic pole is tipped relative to our what we call the geographic pole. Okay, so the geographic pole, so the Earth sits, if you ran the pole, an actual pole through it, if you did sits that. on this tilted axis. It's tilted, that's correct. It's tilted. And it, it's tilted by a lot. So it's so a compass sort of points north, sort of. And by the way, I, I in the scout manuals, when and they talk about And this is the, the device of, we use to find our way when we're lost. <laughs> well, you'll find your yeah, way you to know, you're sort of going, you're sort of going the right you're way. kind of, sort of. kind of, sort of. It's like getting directions in the hood, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, see, what you want to do here, man, what you want to do, you want to go straight down, right? Go you straight, keep going. and then you see, and you, you see Louis's house, right. you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that's my cousin. That's my cousin Boo, right? When you get to cousin Boo's house, you want to make a left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's exactly what it says on the compass. Right. right. <laughs> so, so you, uh, so what they, the, the, the manuals for using a compass know about this, and it's 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 called an offset. So depending on where you are on Earth's surface. When you whip whip out the the compass, you would put an angle offset to find out what true north is. But that changes depending on where you are on Earth's surface. So it's what I always had an issue with is if you knew where you were on Earth's surface, you wouldn't need the, wouldn't compass. Need the compass in the first place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, first place. that's like people say, "I lost my keys." Well, where'd you leave them last? <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Well, what was the last place you left? <laughs> I left them on the counter. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> that is that, a stupid question, right? That is right? crazy, right? But you know, anyway. another stupid one is uh, someone gets injured skiing and they got to be like hauled off to the hospital. And someone asks them, 
Did that did that happen on your last run? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <that> was, <laughs> exactly. Yes, of course it did. <laughs> No, you know, uh, the thing is, I love excruciating pain and skiing. The pain enhances the skiing experience. So when when my tibula is sticking out of my leg, that's when I want to get back on the chairlift. All right. So, so anyway. So so that's where, that's where that is. All right. So in the era of GPS, which knows exactly where the poles are and what the grid system is like, Compasses are basically completely obsolete. Plus, if you know any astronomy, you'll know which way north is and which way the sun is pointing. I mean, so so the compass, I think, is overrated in this regard um, compared with other ways you can also find out where, where you are. But anyway, so that's Earth's magnetic field. It's relatively weak, okay? It's weak. So if you take a bar magnet, I don't know if anyone still has them, you can do this, tie a string in the middle where it's balanced and just sort of suspend it there. It will slowly line up with Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Provided the string is is is, is twisty enough so that right. it can aim where it wants. It'll slowly line up and the north is going to point north <laughs> to Earth's south magnetic field. All right. It turns out as weak ass as this field is, um, it's not always at the same strength nor is it always oriented the same way. The magnetic pole of the Earth flips, and it has flipped many times. Wow. I don't know if anybody knew that. That's... I don't know. Okay, this is good stuff, and now I'm really intrigued. At 100% of the times people, of, of the occasions where people say, uh, I, I hear the world is going to end and Earth's axis is going to flip... Because they heard something about Earth's axis flipping. Right. And they think somehow Santa Claus is going to be south instead of north. When what they read about Earth's axis flipping has been entirely related to the magnetic field flipping. Gotcha. And not right. Earth. So the Earth over. is not actually tumbling over no. so that top is bottom and bottom is top. That has never happened. That's Correct. never happened. Correct. What's happening is the actual magnetic field, which is the things surrounding the Earth, that orientation changes. Right, and it's not just it, the, the part of it we measure and see is outside of the Earth, right. but it's generated from deep From the, the inside core. of the Earth. I, I haven't right. gotten there yet. But I'm just saying that this can reduce in strength, come back in a reversed polarity, reduce in strength and come back again, and that flips, and, and this, this goes on every All half right. million years. So now I gotta know this. What's that? <laughs> In that process, is it a is it an equal diminishing so that it actually goes down to not being there at all, and then or we, we think so. Yeah. So what you have you have volcanic deposits that had uh, metallic ingredients in it, and when the iron when the 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 lava. Um, freezes basically hits room temperature and freezes um it's uh it locks in the magnetic orientation of where that lava was at that time and so people who study this can track the orientation of these magnetic um rocks is, as as they get yeah, brilliant it's complete that brilliant. is insane yes yes oh my god that's crazy yes yes okay so i love it so People wondered, by the way, we are shielded from harmful particles from the sun by this magnetic field. It gets channeled towards the, the magnetic poles and it, it collides with the atmosphere and renders it aglow and it creates the northern and southern lights, the aurora borealis and the aurora australis, okay? Earth's force that, field. That is, Earth's, that's, that is Earth's magnetic force field directing, deflecting particles. And that's why they don't all go to Santa Claus. They go to, the, the best shows are in this ring, it's called a ring, uh, ring uh, uh, it's an, a highly luminous ring where you have the best action of this uh, uh, excited air molecules and it's over Canada, okay? And it's not, that's why it's, we get better aurora borealis than they do over in Russia. Because we have the pole over on our side, our mm -hmm. North American side. Finally, <laughs> something good about Canada. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
Come that on, and their Canada. health insurance. Okay, Canada, Look. you know we love you. You know we love we love Canada. So, um, so it shields us from that. So now here's here's what's going on inside the core. You, you get a magnetic field when you have a fluid. In this case, it would be sort of molten uh, uh, magnetic materials, iron and nickel, in our core. All right, and if it's molten, it means you can move, you convect. There is movement within this material. We know from basic electromagnetism 101, if you move a charge, okay, you create a current. If you create a current, you create a magnetic field. Right. It's called a dynamo theory of magnetic uh, fields. And this so what, is- We do it in class. You take <clears throat> the copper wire. The copper wire, you pass it through, exactly. Pass it through. And, and you it's see the, same... the meter checks, and, and right. the electricity and the magnetism go together. That's why it became one word. Exactly. Right? Early 1800s, I got electricity and I got magnetism. Then you find out one is a manifestation of the other. We glued the words together, and we made the word electromagnetism. Sweet. So, um, because of this, when you have a molten core of conductive materials, uh, in our case it's metal, um, you can generate what's called a dynamo and sustain magnetic fields for millions of years. Wow. Okay? Or a magnetic field phenomenon. So, and as the magnetic field lines get twisted, what happens is they can break and reconnect, and often when they reconnect, they have the opposite polarity than they had before. And that's what's been going on on Earth. That's so cool. Forever. That's so cool. And by the way, the sun's magnetic field goes through, a, this, the sunspot cycle goes through an 11-year uh, from peak to low. And sunspots always come in pairs. There's a positive and a negative because they're magnetic. I don't know if you knew that. Magnetic, they're magnetic pairs. I did sunspots. not know that. Okay, so now watch. So watch. Every 11 years, the sun's magnetic field flips. And when the sunspots show up again, they're now oppositely configured. So Earth is not the only thing whose a magnetic field flips. It happens to the sun every 11 years. So this is not a new phenomenon. Uh, the understanding of it is relatively modern, you know, late 20th century, uh, mid to late 20th century. But there it is. That's our magnetic field. There was worries that when we, um, when the field went to zero and switched, maybe all the bad particles would come and kill all life on Earth. And maybe the, the migrating that's when animals... A, that's when a portal to another dimension opens and we are taken over <laughs> by... <laughs> That'd be a good story, right? That yeah, would be kind you know, of cool, when, right? When the magnetic field drops to zero, what happens next? Yeah. So, so what you do is you, you can look at what effect that would have. There are also many animals that it is asserted that they use the magnetic field uh, particles in their brain to know which way north and south is as navigation to migrate. Uh, I, I've not been as convinced as others have been of that explanation, but let's even give it to them. Fine. You would wonder, will they not know how to how to how to fly, how to swim, how to migrate from one place to another, in, to get out of the cold climates in the, in the winter and return in the summer. You look at the fossil record over those periods, and there's no meaningful extinction episodes happening over any of these. Right. So because whatever our worries are, Earth seems, life on Earth seems to survive them just fine. Right. And um, everybody knows that birds don't really use the uh, magnetic field. They use uh, Google Bird Maps. <laughs> and Google Bird Maps. <laughs> Google Bird Maps is, you know, pretty dope, how, man. Plus, they, they can track you, and that's how they know how to shit on your head. You see? <laughs> <laughs> Google targeting. <laughs> Bombs away. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, there, so there you have it. And my, my only issue with whether animals use magnetic fields is they don't, if the animal knows where the sun rises and sets, and uh, there are other ways to know. Like I said, if you didn't have a compass, you still can figure it out. And so uh, animals are always smarter than I think we give them credit Absolutely. For. And the truth of the matter is um, even we as explorers and being out in the sea, we didn't use magnetic fields. We used the stars. We used the stars. That's correct. Right. On a so, cloudy night, know, it's a little harder. You could... Uh, crash into the rocks on a cloudy night, but on a clear night you could use <laughs> right, this exactly. Things. So yeah, all right, cool, man. Yeah, so wow. there you have it. This Earth's magnetic field. That's fun stuff. I love and it. And by the way, magnetism in general, you didn't ask this, but I'm putting it out there, is to understand it. We've known about magnets ever since lodestone was discovered. This rock that contained the iron that was magnetized before we isolated the iron from it. It's called lodestone. It's still called lodestone. Um, there's no understanding of magnetic fields without quantum physics. Okay, well, then you we don't understand magnetism. 
So sorry, guys. No, <laughs> speak your, your own damn self don't understand the language. <laughs> so, no, you got to get down in there. And the electrons in, in orbit, in their, their orbital clouds around their, the nuclei, there's a point where they align with adjacent atoms. And once that's aligned and coherent, you have a stable magnetic field. Yeah, and but you could, certain... create, you could create a magnet. We used to do this. You take a pin, right? A little steel pin. And you take a, a magnet, and it doesn't even have to be a strong magnet, and you just stroke it. You keep stroking Right, so there you go, and, and you're, you're aligning all of those magnetic domains to right. create a coherent magnet. Now, there are other magnets where, they only, where they'll only stay magnetized in the presence of an electric field. And, and you remove the electric field, then they demagnetize immediately. This is how you get electromagnets. That's how the trains run. Uh, maybe. I don't know enough about trains, but I do know that thing that picks up cars in the trash yard. Oh, nice. That grabs them by their roof. I love roof. that thing. And I picks them. I'm not talking about the clamps, sir. I'm talking about that. No, the that, big, the big disc, the flat thing, the, the disc. Yeah, that comes down and it just right. picks so, up the whole. So, flip the switch, magnet on, boom, there it is. You put it, bring it to the side, magnet off, and you can drop it. So that's an electromagnet, highly uh, functional and exploitive of quantum physics. Nice, very. Cool. There you go, Chuck. We ran out of time. Wow. Well, that was a good one, man. I, uh, you know, I, I think this uh, co this talk will stick with me for a while. Yeah, yeah, and Santa Claus... That was a bad magnet joke. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Oh, oh, so I missed it. Sorry. Yeah, It'll sorry, stick man. With you. I, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really embarrassed that I actually did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm embarrassed I didn't catch it. Just... <laughs> no, you say, uh, this, this, this explainer will stick to me for a long time. That, I would have gotten it had you said time. it stick right. to me. Oh, by the way, just one other thing. If you're between the North Pole, geographic pole, and the North... Uh, geomagnetic pole if you're right. between those two your compass will always point due south <laughs> oh wow right because the uh, this damn thing is broken <laughs> yep yep that's that's all i'm saying awesome the, there you go chuck all right we got to call it quits there this has been another star talk explainer venue chuck always good to have you. always a pleasure neil degrasse tyson here keep looking out. <laughs>